So, of course, the Democratic National Convention is next week, and the lineup is really something. Yeah. See what Team Rising thinks. Okay, back with us, Democratic strategist, former campaign advisor for Pete Buttigieg, Jennifer Holsworth, and national political reporter for Real Clear Politics, Philip Wegman. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Hey, absolutely. So, okay, all right, so what do we got? We've got... Michael Bloomberg mm. just announced yesterday will be taking the DNC stage after spending nearly a billion dollars in that primary. Jen, uh, let's go to you. So he's he actually apparently has not been all that forthgiving to Joe Biden and to the Democrats um, since he ended his campaign bid. However, a lot of progressives like Crystal are looking at this and saying, so Mike Bloomberg, let's throw Yashar's tweet up there on the screen, who stiffed many of his campaign staffers um, and had, you know, basically ran, you know, a very centrist type campaign is going to be speaking there, but AOC only gets 60 seconds in a pre-recorded message. How do you square that? What do you think, Jen? Uh, well, as far as AOC, I think that's 60 seconds too long, but I'll go back to Bloomberg. Wow. Okay. Um, I, right. <laughs> I think that, uh, uh, look, it seems to be a courtesy that each of the former presidential candidates is getting um, some time if they mm. wanted it. Uh, um, Andrew so Yang I, doesn't seem to be. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's correct. Yeah. I said if they wanted it. Um, yeah. I he, wanted that, it. Uh, <laughs> he wanted it. Bad. I, <laughs> he did. We wanted it pretty bad. Yeah. Look, I, I <laughs> go on. I can't. I can't. I obviously have zero insight from the inside of the DNC. Um, but I, I, I don't think it was smart to have Bloomberg up there. Um, I, I don't think he offers anything. He, you know, reneged on his, um, you know, promise to spend uh, a, a great deal organizing for the fall, and so. Um, it's not sour grapes. It's just he brings nothing to the table. Right. Um, Jen, absolutely nothing. Let me right. ask you from a strategic perspective, because, OK, you're not a fan of AOC. That's fine. She's a very popular figure on the Democratic side. And we heard all about in the primary how it's all about unity. Got to bring all everybody together and Democratic Party and these lefties out here. They're going wild and they're no, they're not nice enough to us. And we are a big 10. We all need to come together. But then you see mm -hmm. a lineup like this and you're like, Kasich, Bloomberg, there was controversy over whether AOC even would get a slot at all. They're going to give her 60 seconds, and it's pre-recorded, so they can make sure it's okay. You know, they have to put mm -hmm. Bernie in there. But that's it in terms of outreach to that part of the party. It's not sending much of a message of, like, unity and inclusiveness here. And they also, by the way, denied press credentials to TYT as well. TYT got press credentials to the RNC, but the DNC said, no, sorry, we're already full. I mean, what is the left supposed to make of that? Right. Um, well, I think that there's a, a lot more politics behind, you know, uh, press credentialing TYT. But um, I think that there were a lot of people that should have been featured, you know, people like Lauren Underwood and Ayanna Presley and Katie Porter and really, really accomplished freshmen um, who, have, who have done tremendous things for the party. But we have to remember, conventions are pageants. Obviously, we are in a wild time where we're not going to be able to do what we normally do with a convention, which is speak to the American people for four days straight, right? Nonstop coverage. You're talking about your platform. You know, you're getting your you're getting your point across. And it really is the unofficial kickoff to the election. We are supposed to be putting forward to the American people an argument for why Democrats should win this fall. I think that um, showing unity and all that other stuff is great. Um, and I think that uh, we have to understand that everybody thinks they are the base of the Democratic Party. But as we've seen with the vice presidential pick and how Biden became the nominee, uh, there is a very specific uh, diversity in the Democratic Party that is guiding our hand. And I think that we need to make sure that we're showing that to America. So I have no problem with the lineup in general, especially if it is how I believe a chance to make our argument to America that that is what we stand for. Is it supposed to be a pep rally at the same time? Sure. I've been to a bunch of conventions. They're my favorite things on the planet. It's very exciting to talk about unity and all this other stuff. But really, it's an argument to the American people about why you should elect us. And if we have the opportunity to have varying voices from one end of the spectrum to the other up there, I think we should take that opportunity. Mm. Yeah, but except there aren't that many variants. It's like John Kasich and Michael Bloomberg. That's I mean, but that to me, that's emblematic of what they are actually angling the party to be. So that's why I actually appreciate the lineup, because to me, it makes it very clear. Look, you could have had Sherrod Brown from Ohio, who is a populist, um, who does very well in the state, pro-union, you know, economically left. 
and instead you pick John Kasich. Like, to me, that says everything about the direction that they actually want to take the Democratic Party and Phil. So just one more little thing. Let me, I, let me get I Phil agree in here, with then, you. Jen. One second. Let, let, let me get, get Phil, Phil in here. here. Well, I just want to say that if you are not excited for John Kasich, you've not been following politics. He's a very exciting speech. He's got great <laughs> answers for the future. So I mean, I hope he I'm eats really on the stage. Phil. You guys this morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just want to I want to throw out here that this is going to be a four day infomercial. Right. Let's not kid ourselves. A lot of it's going to be pre-recorded. It's going to be virtual. Um, and, you know, maybe we're going to have a little bit of controversy beforehand, but a lot of it's going to be scripted. Uh, it is kind of embarrassing for Democrats. Andrew Yang, who showed up and ran an unconventional campaign, had to kind of like subtweet the DNC and be like, hey, what's up, guys? Can can I show up? Right. Uh, and so he has to, you know, lobby for himself to be there, even though he has fired up grassroots supporters who might not who might not honestly even come out uh, for Joe Biden unless they get an invitation to. Right. And then the party is going to turn around and let uh, Bloomberg speak on stage. And let's not forget Bloomberg's entire premise to his candidacy was going to be that Joe Biden was going to implode in Iowa, that the progressives were going to tear each other apart, and that he was going to be this billionaire savior to walk in at the last minute and be like, I'm here to fix your party, shut up and get on board. And you're going to let that guy speak? There's not a lot of unity there. Uh, I think the DNC is counting on the fact that its voters have short memories. But if we remember 2016, the fact is, they don't. They remember this stuff and it stings. Right. So, Phil, just expand a little bit on that, because that's what we've talked a bit here, which is that Andrew Yang actually had 42 percent crossover with Trump voters amongst his base. And then to the AOC point that Jen was talking about earlier, which is that, you know, if you have a group of people who might feel disaffected, isn't the best way in order to invite their leaders to your convention to say, you know, you should come and vote for this person? Kind of at, not even an olive branch like that's how you know, you convince somebody by having somebody they already agree with, tell them that they should do something. What do you think? I mean, look, look we'll see whether or not those voters follow, uh, you know, Joe Biden eventually. That's the conventional wisdom. But you're out of your damn mind if you think the Republicans are going to be like, oh, yeah, uh, John Kasich was at the uh, the DNC. I think I'm going to, like, leave Trump and vote for right. Biden now because <laughs> the son of a mailman endorsed the former vice president. That's right. ridiculous. But yeah. to your earlier point, Andrew Yang has passionate supporters, and they do have a real crossover with the Trump base. Go get those voters instead of doing this uh, boring strategist play where you think that, um, you know, you throw a, a generic Republican white man up there and Republicans are going to be like, oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah. no, Biden's yeah, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they've I been trying that strategy yeah. for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to just keep yeah. going with it. Um, guys, great to see you both. Thank you so much. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Next on Rising, general strike is trending on Twitter, and the Senate's gone home for vacation. We're going to talk about all of that and where we are with the stimulus when Rising returns.